You cannot control the idiots that are out there doing what they're doing. What you can control is how you process things, where your energies go, and how proactive you're going to be to make this world a better place, to counteract all that stuff that's going on. And now for something completely different. Welcome to Surrounded by Idiots Radio Podcast. Okay, I need you all to put down the uh, Clorox cocktail and uh, pull the light bulb out of your ass. It is time for the Surrounded by Idiots Radio Podcast. This is Tony Dufresne, PhD, your host. It, as crazy as that sounds, that's our new reality. Before I start the show, I want to just ask one thing. Please, for the love of God, can we stop with the whole are you wearing pants thing on the Zoom call? That's like the dad joke of the pandemic. We are starting to see humanity in all of its glory. Well, the problem is, is you've got, again, like I said last week, you've got the crazies, the 5% of the nut jobs, and they're the ones that are getting the most attention, and that is becoming the narrative. And you and I know that that's not the case, but there's a lot of people out there that live in very, very two-dimensional lives that don't know, and then it starts to freak them out. So that leads me into the show. And like I've told you before, I'm a big fan of Marcus Aurelius, and he was a Roman emperor, but he was the last of the famous Stoic philosophers. And during the last 14 years of his life, he faced one of the worst plagues in European history, and they thought it was a strain of smallpox. Nevertheless, it killed 5 million people, and they think that maybe it even killed Marcus Aurelius himself. The key point in all this is that in the middle of this plague, Marcus wrote his book. His book is called The Meditations. If you aren't familiar with it or you haven't read it, it is absolutely brilliant. And he did it as almost self-therapy because he was out on the battlefields trying to conquer the rest of northern Europe. And what he did was he frequently applied these philosophies to his challenges of coping with pain and illness and anxiety and loss. And the best part about it in terms of right now, in current times, is it's a great roadmap for us to develop the mental resilience skills required to cope with this pandemic issue. Basically, the approach is very simple, and it comes down to the assumption that our true good in us resides on our own thoughts and our own actions where we distinguish what is up to us or what's in our own control and what's not in our own control. That level of self-awareness and perspective is key to everything. If you can figure out what's in your control and what's not in your control, it really makes life a lot easier and a lot more fulfilling. Now, in philosophy, it's called the dichotomy of control. Even though what happens to me or what's happening in the world is not under my direct control, my thoughts and my actions relating to what is happening to me are under my control. The way I process things and the way I act after processing those things is absolutely under my control. The pandemic is obviously not under our control. But how we process it and the actions we take because of it are under our own control individual controls. It's not the virus itself or the inconsiderate action of the idiots out there, not social distancing or storming the Michigan State House with a bunch of AK-47s because they want to intimidate people to open things up again. It's not them pissing us off so much as our opinions about them that piss us off. (laughs) That's where perspective comes into place. And it's interesting because that philosophy, the Stoic philosophy, the basis of that was the inspiration for cognitive behavioral therapy, or they call it CBT. It was developed by Albert Ellis and Aaron Beck. And if you've been to therapy before, if you've ever researched it, cognitive behavioral is one of the most effective therapy methods out there. It's about changing patterns of thinking and or behavior that are behind people's difficulties and thereby changing the way they feel. It's about, and here it is again, heightened levels of self-awareness, It's about being able to read emotions that come up in you to determine which ones are healthy, which ones are not healthy. What it does is it exposes distorted perceptions and thoughts that lead to painful, destructive feelings and terrible actions. Basically, you're pattern interrupting your normal, instinctual reactions to things 
And before those start to churn and create that level of anxiety in you, or even create the level of anxiety and then and that leading to destructive behavior, you stop it even before any of that starts. So at the beginning of the book of meditations, Marcus Aurelius shared an extremely effective tool in applying these principles, the stoic philosophy principles, the cognitive behavioral, it's the same thing. What he did was he listed the qualities he most admired in other individuals. And he had 17 friends. They were members of his family and his teachers. And what he would do is he would have the list with him or he would remember the list and he would ask himself, how did other people cope with similar challenges? This is the antiquities version of what would blank do? What he didn't want to do was spiral out of control and create this level of internal fear and anxiety and depression and frustration that didn't match the situation that was out of his control or in the exterior world. Because one of the foundations of the thinking is that the fear you generate about something does you more harm than the thing itself. And that happens a lot, obviously, especially with coronavirus and other big crises in your life. It's not to say that they don't deserve a significant level of concern. It's what that concern does to you and how it impacts you. Because you can take a situation like what's going on right now and you could have significant concern for it. You could be more cautious and be more caring for other people, create more kindness, check up on people, make sure you are wearing a mask, doing the things you need to do to be a good team player. Or it could freak you out to the point where you are overly paranoid, overly scared, and then share that negative energy with the people around you. We have a world now where we're in a nodal event, as I've spoken about numerous times, and it's exposing the underlying frailties, like the big underlying frailties of humanity and of groups. And groups form together more clearly especially in crisis times. And that's why you're seeing this particular situation. And you see the people that are, they're more two-dimensional, they're more binary thinking, they're more self-preservationists, they are more based in fear, but they have a mic in their face now. And then you have another group, which is a, sort of a silent majority of those people that are not active, but they're easily manipulated. Because they're scared to death of what's happening because they don't know. And it's that whole fear of unknown. But that's why it's even more important now for us to do this. It's even more important now for us to be the stable ones. For us to have levels of context and self-awareness and perspective. For us to lead the way in regards to how we process things. Lead the way in terms of how of the proper actions to be taken that are not actions based on fear. That their actions based on solving the problems. They're, at, they're, they're based on us coming together. They have an assumption that we're all in this together. Because there are going to be people that don't think that we're all in this together. And they're going to be hoarding toilet paper. And they're going to be out there not social distancing. Or they're going to be out there trying to get people to open up businesses. Because they're only looking to be self-serving. But we can't change that. I mean, have you ever had a political conversation with somebody who's totally opposite of how you think? Have you ever changed their mind? It's not about that. And that's what this whole thing is. It's a pivot to understanding what you can control and what you cannot control. You cannot control the idiots that are out there doing what they're doing. What you can control is how you process things, where your energies go, and how proactive you're going to be to make this world a better place, to counteract all that stuff that's going on. To be one of those 17 friends that are on that list of virtues, that list of, you know, what would Bob do? What would Cindy do? What would They would look to you in terms of what you would do in that situation. That's our goal, is to be on that list. So the call to action I want to throw at you today is basically doing the list. It's writing out a list of people in your life or historical people or even fictional characters. I personally, for years, have done this. And what and I've always used Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I didn't know the guy, and he had probably had faults like every other human being. But what I do is I use 
what I know. I use the energy that he portrayed. I use the courage that he portrayed in circumstances, the level headedness. And I use that to ground myself. He is one of the 17 on my list. So I would say write down a list of people in your life, historical, fictional, that have qualities that you admire. And then list the qualities that you admire about them. It could be three people. It could be five. It could be 20. It doesn't really matter. What matters is, is you're creating a cheat sheet or a guide to where you can always come back and say, wait a minute, these people handled it this way. They were able to take it under consideration. They were able to have self-awareness, context, and perspective in times of crisis or just, or just in making a particular decision in your life. doesn't even have to be crazy coronavirus stuff. And they were able to put it in context and then take the action according to that and be proactive about it instead of reacting to the craziness and that energy that's coming at them. That's called a leader. And I guarantee you master that technique. Number one, you'll be unstoppable. Number two, people will always look up to you and you will be a natural leader. That's like the easiest, most effective tool you can do to become a leader. Remember, it's the classic, what would Jesus do? (laughs) And for me, it's the classic, what would Lincoln do? So who's your person in the what would blank do? If you can use that to pattern interrupt your thoughts before they went down the wrong path, then you are way ahead of everybody else. I hope things are good out there. I really appreciate over the last month or so, everybody who has commented, everybody who has asked for the book. There are people out there that have the team concept. There are people out there that want to be team players, and I cannot appreciate that more. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you want to talk about this or anything, or you want a copy of the book, please let me know. I'm more than happy to. It's Tony at javabud.com. YouTube videos are up. I also have the Alexa flash briefings. So if you have Alexa, you can go to your skills section in your account and look for Surrounded by Idiots. And you can hear me on little clips every single morning if you want. Again, I hope all is good. I hope you are all taking care of each other. I'll talk to you next week. I'm too tired to pretend I don't want to be alone. I'm calling all the